All right, folks, we've made it to episode six, almost toward the end, two chapters left of 1776 by David McCullough. I'm in my office the day before uh, school's going to start, and as you can see uh, behind me, I've uh, kind of borrowed a picture of George Washington that we have the hall in the hallway here at school, kind of as inspiration as we go through uh, this chapter. Chapter 6 and 7, the last two chapters, uh, make up part 3 of the book, which is called The Long Retreat, and chapter 6 is known, uh, is entitled Fortune Frowns. Uh, before I get into part 1 of chapter 6, let me just mention something to you that Coach Dancy uh, just let me know about earlier today. If you go to a um, website called History Animated, uh, you're going to notice that you can select different wars. The American Revolution is one of those, and it d does different animations for different key battles in American wars. Uh, so when you go to uh, the American Revolution, you can click on the Battle of Boston, as well as, and most importantly, the Battle of New York, and kind of get a flow of what uh, the book uh, deals with. So you might want to check that out. Again, history animated. Uh, part one of chapter six, uh, to, jump, uh, to jump into this, again, fairly long chapter uh, here, uh, but what you have uh, taking place is as we end chapter five, uh, the American forces had just retreated across the uh, East River from, Dor uh, from Brooklyn Heights, uh, to New York, and that's where Chapter 6 uh, picks up. Uh, the American forces in New York, uh, generally at least at first, are in uh, good spirits, but that's soon uh, going to change. You still have a bunch of uh, desertions, and you see that more people are being critical of George Washington, and there's kind of a push or a desire that perhaps uh, Charles Lee, Washington's second-in-command, uh, needs to uh, take over. Uh, the big decision that the Americans in Washington have to make at this point is, do we need to evacuate New York City completely, or should we put up a fight? Uh, they went back and forth a little bit. Ultimately, they decided uh, that they would evacuate, almost waited too late, as we'll trace through that. A key character that I hadn't mentioned to you up to this point that needs to be introduced is Joseph Reed, uh, who was an adjutant general to George Washington, uh, helped him uh, write his letters, uh, organize things, uh, helped him issue orders, uh, respected Washington a lot, but he's beginning to lose a little bit of faith in Washington uh, at this point. Uh, an American delegation meets with a British delegation uh, after uh, the move to New York had been completed. Nothing really came of it other than slowing down uh, the British lines, and Washington and his war council finally made the decision that we're going to evacuate uh, New York. Uh, Henry Clinton, who I've mentioned to you a couple times before, second in command to William Howe, uh, wanted to land north of the American troops with British ships, land a force, and then move south, uh, capturing the British uh, excuse me, capturing the Americans at New York. That plan would have worked, would have been successful, uh, but William Howe was going to overrule them, and he decides uh, that they're going to land at the tip of the island at a place called Kipps Bay. Uh, so when you deal with General Howe, I think McCullough does a real good job of dealing with them, doesn't uh, dismiss him as a poor or bad general, uh, but at the same time, there's uh, this belief that Howe had that was ultimately flawed, uh, that Washington and the Americans were simply going to give up, that the British just needed to capture cities, clear land, and that eventually the army, Washington's army, would quit. Never tries really to deliver a death blow to Washington's army, and that's the critical mistake uh, that he makes. Uh, but in terms of tactics and winning battles, he actually does a halfway decent job. Uh, part two of the book picks up with the British landing uh, at Kipps Bay, uh, and that caught the Americans uh, in New York totally uh, flat footed, and you have significant uh, retreat running away. Uh, almost uh, from the lines as the British are landing. Washington was di very disappointed in the men. 
uh, for fleeing, but they didn't have uh, much of a choice uh, at that point. Uh, so you have the British Army beginning to pursue into New York as the Americans are involved in a very hasty retreat. Um, McCullough mentions the story of a lady by the name of Lindley Murray, a uh, 50-year-old widow uh, who invited William Howe and his staff to dinner or to tea at her mansion and slowed up the British attack. Uh, did a tremendous service, kind of as a decoy to the British Army. Uh, Howe fell into that uh, trap. Some have wanted to suggest that perhaps uh, with uh, Miss Murray that there was maybe a little bit more, uh, oh, what could you say, extracurricular activity that could have been involved there. But McCullough dismisses that and reminds the reader that uh, this lady was 50 years old and had been uh, the mother of 12 children at this point, uh, so there probably wasn't much more going on uh, than talking and chatting and a lot of food and wine, but it did slow down uh, Howe's uh, army. Um, big debate as the Americans fled, uh, should they uh, catch uh, parts of New York on fire to burn things of value for the invading British army? Uh, they decided not to do that, but as they're fleeing, fire starts in the city nonetheless. It's suspected that it was uh, set by an arson, but nobody, an American arson, but nobody really knows. Uh, so Washington didn't disobey Congress's orders and set the city on fire, but yet at the same time, he was not particularly uh, disappointed uh, when the fire uh, did break out. Um, he McCullough mentions the story of a man who has been considered by many to be a hero uh, at this point in the Battle of New York, a, an American spy by the name of Nathan Hale, who was captured by the British. They eventually hung him, uh, and his dying words are, I regret that I have but one life to lose for my country, and emphasize the my country uh, in regard to America. Uh, McCullough uh, doesn't totally dismiss him as unimportant, but kind of pulls the carpet out of those who have viewed Hale as a tremendous hero and have said, said that Nathan Hale was really kind of stupid and foolish. His plans to be a spy were ill-conceived, and that that famous line uh, that he spoke, well, he actually plagiarized it. Uh, from an, or a Roman writer by the name of Cato, and all the British uh, men of learning who would have heard that would have known that he didn't come up with that line on the spot. So McCullough kind of says, eh, you can like Nathan Hell if you want to, but just keep in mind he was kind of a stupid spy, and his famous line, I regret that I have but one life to lose for my country, was plagiarized from someone else. Uh, so, uh, what you, again, what you have happening uh, is that the Americans are fleeing up uh, York Peninsula or Island as the British are pursuing. The big decision is William Howe going to wait, uh, wait out winter as you're now in, moving on into November, or is he going to continue to pursue Washington's army? And in fact, he did continue uh, to pursue. You have 7,000 British and Hessians that attack uh, Fort Washington. Uh, Washington, that fort, of course, was named after him, would have been much wiser to have evacuated that fort, didn't, and you end up with um, a surrender of that fort, major embarrassment to Washington. Uh, then uh, part three of the book, actually, of this chapter, excuse me, actually gives some of the details of the fighting that took place at Fort Washington. Uh, Hessian, these German troops that were uh, hired by the British were involved and the fort is forced to surrender. Uh, but again, McCullough points out if these Hessians would have been allowed to do what they wanted to and if the army could have continued to pursue, could have been a much more devastating blow uh, to the American army. But Howe will just kind of pull up uh, short of that uh, so by 1 p.m., uh, all the Americans have been forced into Fort Washington, and ultimately that fort uh, does surrender. Uh, again, could have been worse, um, uh, but it ended up uh, being where Washington's army escapes again. And McCullough ends Chapter uh, 6 here by just giving yet more analysis on Washington. Um, 
and he he just basically criticizes him and said that he was in command even though others wanted to keep Fort Washington and continued to fight that it was a poor decision, that even though others below him wanted to do that, Washington should have seen the foolishness of that, should have overruled him and said, no, we're going to evacuate, we're going to retreat. But he doesn't, and when Fort Washington is captured, uh, you have many American soldiers that are captured as well as a lot of provisions. So as you come to the end of Chapter 6, which again was fairly uh, accurately named Fortune Frowns. You see Washington and the American Army uh, fleeing after some fairly devastating defeats, and they end up crossing over into New Jersey and are basically just running for their lives. And that's what you have at the end of Chapter 6, with one chapter left to go.